Hello, hello. Um, the Iceland volcano has come back, and so I thought I'll say a few words. The uh, eruptions are continuing. It's the ninth eruption on the peninsula in the last three years, and uh, it's the sixth one of the Sundnukur kind of series. Uh, at least that's how I call them, uh, the ones further to the west. And uh, let's quickly have a look at uh, the uh, various sources there online, and um, I'll share my screen for that. So here is the IMO, the Icelandic Met Office. They have the responsibility for monitoring the volcanic activity. And this is what they write. This is the latest update was this morning, but uh, they're describing the situation already from last night when the eruption started. They have updated this uh, here. The eruption fissure initially expanded both to the north and the south. The length of the fissure has not been estimated at this point. This was 21.50 local time last night. And uh, then there is update saying the fissure is uh, one kilometer or so, um, uh, 1.4 kilometer I read elsewhere, and that uh, the um, gas plume has reached about one kilometer in height. Later on, it was revised. The fissure turned out to be pretty long. And um, let's see if I can get this up. The fissure actually turned out to be almost four kilometers long. And um, oops. So here it is. So in zone three, as predicted, the main hazard zone for eruption fissures and activity, that's where the new fissure came up. And this is the red line here. The fissure has initially, as we read, gone to the south and the north, but it seems to be mainly uh, con uh, continuing to the north now. And it seems to be mainly feeding to the north. The lava seems to flow towards the north. So this is very important. And here is now another map uh, showing this fissure in more detail. This was updated uh, um, uh, about an hour later or half an hour later and uh, then it became clear the fissure is uh, four kilometers long and mo one of the main feed events is actually not down here as we've seen in the uh, previous um, eruptions it's actually more up here and uh, this is a lot of activity now so the lava seems to flow mainly towards the north at this point and not so much to the south or the west. This is good news in a direct context for the Grindavik Road, but um, it, it, it may actually herald something bigger. And uh, we'll come to that in a, in a few minutes. There may be a change in the whole game plan now. And I think this is something we need to, to look at. So the um, situation right now looks like this. This is the live cam. And this is the view from Voga, actually from the north coast of the peninsula, looking towards the south, and it's quite impressive. And here we have various different views. This is the view from approximately the southwest. So much of the activity is actually behind this hill there. And there you see this white cloud coming up. This is actually very important. It's this white cloud here. And uh, it was a little stronger about half an hour ago. And there must be some phreatomagmatic activity. So the uh, fissure must have hit some groundwater aquifer or reservoir, some subterranean accumulation or some very wet kind of upper soil substrate. Something like this is going on there right now. And this, of course, means that there's a lot of gas and smoke and uh, also from the burning vegetation coming out, although it shouldn't be too dry right now. The good news is that uh, if we're looking at the uh, Met Office predictions, the wind is coming from the north right now, and it brings all the smoke and the fumes out onto the ocean. It's going over Grindavik itself, but Grindavik is evacuated. So not a lot of folks should actually be in Grindavik. So this is hopefully not too bad. So the view from the south is looking like this. There is the end of the fissure. The fissure continues here. You can see the glow there. And there is the white kind of water vapor that comes from this one site where we seem to have this interaction between magma and, um, and water. So the um, important kind of uh, aspect then um, when we go back to the Met Office is that uh, the hazard prediction is locally identical to what we previously had. And uh, the eruption has now decreased a little bit in intensity since its start. So hopefully it will continue to go down. But uh, whether this is now going to be an eruption of just a few days or several weeks, well, that's maybe too early to, to say. So uh, we will have to 
wait a little bit and see how things develop. But uh, one important point I should perhaps uh, make is that uh, this is the map of the Reykjans Peninsula. Here we have the Fagredals Fjatl lavas, here we have the uh, Sundnukur lavas, and this is pretty much up to date because we have the June lavas here already going around Grindavik, so this is the latest. And the, the camera view I've just showed you is actually from Vogar looking down, and this is the um, this is the vent alignment and the fissure, you can just about see it here, and this is continuing now to feed lava to the north. And that is a bit of a game changer, I believe, because this means that most of the lava is not draining to the west or the south, as in previous uh, eruptions in the area, but it actually seems to go northward. And that, of course, means we could potentially facing, if eruptions continue, we would potentially be facing the possibility of the lava cutting off the big highway that connects Reykjavik with Keflavik, the international airport. In the last major eruption episode in medieval times, there was lava flows going all the way to the north coast. So this is not unrealistic. I don't think it will come to that in this particular eruption. Hopefully the eruption will not deliver so much uh, lava that uh, it will reach the north coast. But if eruptions continue for potentially decades, as many scientists believe, then that has become a more serious possibility now. So a um, few more web views. Here is another view. This is from uh, Thorbjörn, actually. And there you see the uh, white cloud here in the background. There's a bit of fuming here. The main vent of the previous uh, few eruptions in the Sudnoka chain seems not to be a major player this time. And uh, the vents further to the north seem to get stronger. So here's a view. So the uh, main vent of the May and June events is further towards the right here on that image. But here we have a bit of the uh, activity also recorded. So then um, we might want to have a look at this. So this is the same kind of situation. Here is a vent and um, it's going with some small fire fountains. So these would not be very extreme, but um, obviously the issue is that um, the lava is mainly fed towards the north, i.e. towards the left of this image, and uh, therefore it's not giving us a full kind of overview at this point. Okay, I think um, this got us all the idea, and of course this is uh, something to be looked at and monitored, although right now I think it is um, actually good news. Um, it is actually good news that the lava is going to the north because that means the Grindavik road is not uh, affected for now. And uh, it also means that it might be giving the civil protection authorities uh, in Iceland an idea now that maybe it could be time to actually build barriers in the northern end of things as well, trying to think about what the motorway might experience if lava is too spread further north in future eruptions. So thinking ahead, using this as a, a, a warning it could actually be a very useful thing and uh, I think um, this is something to consider for now. Okay, let's see how this develops. Thank you very much for your time. All the very best and uh, well, enjoy your weekend. Bye.